so consider this question it was asked in gate 2006 now what they are asking is consider three cpu intensive processes which requires 10 20 30 time units fine why they are saying cpu intensive processes because these processes are going to take more cpu time as compared to more input output time okay now saying and the arrival at time 0 2 and 6 so they are saying we have three processes with the following burst time and this is the arrival time of each processes now they are asking how many context switches are needed if the operating system implements shortest remaining time first algorithm okay now let me formalize it here we have three processes assume the processor p1 p2 and p3 and they are giving the arrival times of these processes what is the arrival time it is 0 2 and 6 and they are giving the burst time of these processes what is the burst time it is 10 20 and 30 now they are asking what are the number of context switches which happen okay now let us make a gantt chart for for this so this is the gantt chart fine now at time 0 only one process will be there which is the process p1 so as you can see the process p1 is the smallest process the next smallest is process p2 the next smallest is process p3 or you can say the biggest process is process p3 because we are having only three processes now even if they are giving that it is the shortest remaining time first algorithm but if you start the process p1 first then this will always be the smallest process after that if you do the process p2 then process p2 will always be smaller than the process p3 fine so at time 0 only process p1 is available so we are going to execute the process p1 from time 0 to time uh, 10 10 units of time after that we are going to execute the process p2 from time 10 units to 30 and then we are going to execute the process p3 from 30 to 60 okay now see how many context switches are there so what is the context switch let me just summarize it again so if this is the cpu and we take one process inside the cpu assume this is a process p1 now after the completion of process p1 maybe due to preemption or maybe it is because the process p1 has completed now what i am saying let me repeat again what i am saying is if let us suppose we have the process p1 now the process p1 is executing in the cpu now there can be two scenarios when process p1 can come out of the cpu number one scenario is the process p1 has already completed now it is the turn of next process to go inside the cpu or the second scenario is process p1 is uh, going to come out of the cpu because of preemption now if you take process p1 from cpu and if you in, uh, take another process p2 into the cpu then this is called as a context switch okay now there are two ways to define context switch the first way is we have process control block we have some process attributes we store all these process attributes into the process control block when one process is executing in the cpu then we are reading the process control block of that process and this process control blocks is stored in the form of linked list we have already done this now if we take process p1 out of the cpu then we have to bring other process p2 inside the cpu now when we bring the other process p2 inside the cpu now we are basically changing the context from the previous pcb to the next pcb we are reading the next other pcb process control block of the process p2 therefore if in this case if you see we have process p1 in the cpu now when we switch context from process p1 to p2 now this is a context switch when we switch context from process p2 to p3 now this is a context switch and they have already mentioned that do not count the context switch at time 0 and at the end therefore we are not going to count this context switch and we are not going to count this context switch now how many context switches are there this is the first context switch and this is the second context switch therefore the answer is b for this question okay